Hi everyone, welcome to our Nanome series where we are actually exploring the KRAS structure today. Uh, so joining us, we have our scientists, Mike, Carla, and Daniel, and we're going to be exploring the structure of KRAS as well as some very interesting uh, KRAS inhibitors that we could see bound in the pocket right here. KRAS protein is a GTPase, which means it converts uh, GTP into GDP. And uh, in this way, the KRAS acts like a switch that is turned on and off by the GTP and GDP molecules. Here we have the GDP bound, and here we have the actual active pocket with the ligand bound here with the switch two and switch one loops that are characteristic of uh, the KRAS protein. So I believe they started, uh, Bayer, they started with uh, this compound to develop a new set of covalent inhibitors that we're going to be discussing very soon. Yeah, it's really interesting what Bayer did. They took this lead compound from Avalis and broke it up into four different segments. And they left the two ends, so this phenyl ring down here, they left this the same and then let the acrylamid, the warhead for covalent bonding the same, but the two middle parts, they did scaffold hopping. So they built a library of over 7 million compounds uh, and then looked at those, compared it to the pharmacophore of the known KRAS inhibitors, and then did docking and molecular modeling to get that down to a prioritized list and came up with some interesting new structures. Yeah, so, so the, this white structure is the, the same uh, KRAS protein. Um, this is actually a crystal comp, uh, crystallized structure where we can see that there's new compounds in the green here. And so this green compound has been crystallized with the KRAS, so that's why you see it so nicely. And we're just going to compare that to that original compound uh, by putting that in there and then just talking about some of these interesting differences. The original orange structure has uh, two ortho substituents on each of the uh, aromatic portions, which is forcing it to uh, a torsion of about 140 degrees or so. And I think it was a barrier rotation of approximately 30 kcals per mole, whereas the new structures are almost planar mm -hmm. orientation of the aromatic rings. Yeah, and what's interesting about this is because this green one can get planar, you can see this carbonyl of this amide can make a nice hydrogen bond with the backbone glycine here. Whereas in the orange structure, it can't get close enough to do that. And there's actually a, a water molecule that sits here with the orange structure. So this is a new interaction, direct interaction that can be picked up with this new molecule. I was just going to mention that there's another precise H bond here with this lysine residue. And then, of course, the covalent with the cysteine 12. What's the distance to that lysine? Is, are we able to measure that in nano? 2.81. Yeah, really nice. And what about the glycine to the carbonyl? What's that about? About the same? Uh, so we got this one to right there. Oh, yeah, 2.83. Nice. And Daniel, you were talking about the cysteine here. Do you want to explain that a bit? Sure. So the wild type uh, contains a glycine here instead. And so the mutated does contain a cysteine, which contains a sulfur atom. And that allows for a covalent bond with uh, the molecule here. So it binds really well uh, only to the mutated KRAS, not the wild tap. So that's exactly what we want. Yeah, this KRAS G12C just is, is on almost all the time and signals and signals and drives the cancer. But uh, by binding here, we lock it into an inactive conformation and it can't, it can't keep going back to the active conformation. So it's really exciting to have an inhibitor here in the switch to binding pocket. Right, affecting the, the switch from the GDP converting to GTP, right? Which right, is located right. over here. Yeah, and the switch to inhibitors are also attractive because the, uh, of the extreme uh, affinity of KRAS for the GTP, so it's difficult to target the, uh, the GTP binding site as well. So uh, we have the cysteine 12, um, which is going to be the mutated type. Um, but if we have, uh, so oops, if we uh, select just the residue there, and then we pull up our handy dandy mutation menu. Uh, we could actually mutate that. So right now it's a cysteine. Uh, if we wanted to put that into a glycine, um, this should be mm -hmm. more like the wild type. 
And we could see that that you know got rid of the that covalent bond that we had there. Um, so really, when this glycine turns into a cysteine, uh, it makes it such that that covalent bond could form, um, you know, with the the sulfur that's at the end of the cysteine and the you know the carbon that we have on our chemical compound docked in there. That's really um, yeah, nice. And there's it's... another another pretty common mutant that's the G12D that uh, people would like to target. But if you put it in aspartic acid there, we can see that we're not able to form the same covalent bond with the acrylamide. So we need a different strategy if we wanted to go after G12D. Um, but yeah, we have the, the cysteine. Um, and then we could also have the um, aspartic acid over there. And the aspartic acid doesn't have the sulfur. It just has the, uh, the oxygens at the end there. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show how you can grab the molecule with your hands. You can see the GDP. You can turn it around and see the binding pockets with the ligand here in inhibitor. And um, yeah, so you can scale it real big and get into the pocket and explore those um, hydrogen bonds happening. Here we have this happening with our water up there. And then if we turn to the other side, here we see other hydrogen bonds happening over there as well with the other residues that we discussed before and we can even see the gdp over there in the other pocket so daniel i wonder what yeah. parts of the pocket are hydrophobic and which parts might have a uh, good hydrogen bond partners is there a way to show surface and hydrophobicity yep yeah. right yeah this is more informative. Maybe just turning around like this. Let's see both again. Yeah, this is the tastier color scheme sponsored by Dippin' Dots. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, after um, looking at the hydrophobic surface, um, we decided to calculate the chemical properties of this ligand. And as you can see, the log P is around three. Um, which is probably reasonable for this compound um, and reasonably hy hydrophobic. But the um, polar surface area is almost 90, which is actually fairly high. It's kind of interesting considering how hydrophobic that pocket is. Cool, thanks. Uh, yeah, it was actually very interesting to look at these two KRAS structures and look at some of these new compounds that are emerging. Um, yeah, very exciting to see all the research and we hope that uh, someday these drugs will actually help cure cancer and you know, help treat cancer and, and affect patients' lives. All right. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.